want to welcome everybody again for being here on today's live stream. Um, and, you know, it's been a little delayed with YouTube issues and mic issues, but uh, what we're going to talk about today is how to write a better book and more importantly, how to look less self-published. And I know that sounds uh, a bit harsh, but unfortunately, here in 2019, there's still a bit of a stigma when it comes to self-publishing and that it's a bit subpar, which I've seen so many self-published books that are not subpar at all. A majority of them are not, but there are a few bad eggs out there that are just ruining it for everybody else, for us that want to make a career out of this. And so I'm going to give you a few tips on how to make your book look that much more professional. Um, now, I, some people may be only writing low content, no content books. You want to stick around because at the end, I actually have a tip that is specifically uh, will, has helped my no content, low content brand or one of my brands. And it's probably something you haven't heard of before. So it might send your eyebrows. But first, let me check with the chat one more time. <clears throat> okay, looks like uh, we got Self Pub in the house. We got Kelly Publish. We've got D Chataway. I am so glad to see you guys in here. Michael's in the house. All right, so if you have any questions, throw them in the comments, throw them in the chat, and I'll try to get to each and every one of them. Um, okay, so the first thing is formatting. Now, with very little exceptions, you want to have your book justified. Not left justified, not right justified, but there's actually an option that says justified. And that makes it more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And it just, it looks better, it looks more professional. One of the exceptions to this is children's books. Children's books are typically left justified. But again, this is one of the few exceptions, not the rule. Um, obviously, if you're writing a poetry book, a lot of those are, are centered. But again, majority of the books, you want to justify your, uh, your interior format. Uh, let's see, next. I've got my little cheat sheet notes here. Um, the paper color. Paper color, again, for majority of the books, are, you're going to want to go with white. Now, if you're writing a novel, and this is a mistake I made on one of my earlier publications, is you want to have it on cream paper. It's, it's easier on the eyes when they're reading for a long period of time that the black ink is on a cream background it's less strain on the eye and especially if you're writing a novel you want to keep them engaged in your book as much as possible you don't want them to put that book down to rub their eyes to take a break or anything like that you want them completely in, emerged in your uh, you know your world your magic system whatever um, any but again majority of the time you're going to want to put it on white paper see next is editing and I know on all of these channels you've probably heard that you need to get your book edited a million times and it's absolutely true and I know that some people actually a lot of people are on a tight budget I am as well I do this part-time I've got a wife four kids two dogs and zero time so we want to make sure that we make the few dollars that we have count so there are ways around paying a lot of money up front all at once for editing. I know a few edit or I know a few authors who actually have they they basically piecework out their editing. So they may have one chapter edited a month and because that's all they can afford or two chapters depending. That's fine. I would rather have my book take a year to publish and be good and and with as little errors grammatically, structurally, and typing wise, spelling wise as possible than to just throw a book out there. That's gonna be the difference between people who are gonna be here for five, 10, 20 years from now, or those that are just in here to get the cheap, you know, the, the, the free, you know, the money right off the bat, quick buck, and then leave. So that right there, editing alone is one of the easiest ways to spot a 
subpar a sub subpar self-published book now I've actually if you've followed my channel for a while you know that I'm really big in thinking outside the box you bartering for things I've actually had my uh, 75,000 word manuscript edited professionally without it costing me anything because they were writing their own book as well and they had a lot of questions and I basically helped them publish their book in exchange for them editing my book. So again, you just got to think outside the box, but there's no reason to, to skip the editing process. Obviously you want to self edit your, your book first and then maybe get some beta readers, beta readers that are familiar with your genre will help you in the structure of your story as well as tropes and everything like that. I would do all of that first and then give it to an editor because it typically will be in the editor's hands less time because you've cleaned it up as much as you possibly can. And by it being in their hands less time, typically that means it'll be cheaper on your wallet in the end. Um, before I move on, I want to check back with the chat. Let's see. Oh, we got quite a few people in the house now. Um, let's see if there's any questions. Josh Watts in the house. By the way, um, I I just got familiar with your channel. Dude, what you're doing for no content books, amazing. If you haven't checked out his channel, go check it out. Not now, but check it out when you're done watching this. Um, you know, he, he, and he's getting a lot of flack for some of the stuff that he gives away because he doesn't hold anything back. And he just gives you all the information that, that he has. Amazing. Um, let's see. Lily the... Lilith Poetry in the house. Um, my son, Sean, he's actually got a few poetry books out there. Uh, glad to see you here. The Underground Toy Society, hey, glad to see you here. Again, if you have any questions about anything I'm saying or just any other questions, uh, make sure you put them in the chat. If you're catching this on the replay, throw them down in the comments. Um, this, this live stream, actually we're supposed to start at 11, so um, I'm about an hour behind so I may not be able to stick around as long as I normally would but uh, I will definitely check the chat afterward and uh, and the comments and I will respond to every single comment that comes in um, so after editing and before I move on from editing one thing is when you the great thing about editing and having somebody else edit your book is they can catch things that you may do on a regular basis that you can therefore fix and not do in the future. Great example is uh, my buddy uh, Dale L. Roberts, self-publishing with Dale, he's in the house right now, and he pointed out when he looked, when he read one of my books that I used the word that a lot, and that's a filler word, and you know, whether it's so, that, now, that kind of thing, you, a lot of times you can take those words out and your sentence will still sound exactly the same, sometimes even better. And by him pointing that out, now I know to be cognizant of that. So when I write, I don't use that word as much. Next, cover. And I know you've heard this just along with, with editing on pretty much every channel, but you cannot stress enough how important your cover is. As a kid, you were told, you know, don't judge a book by its cover, but that's exactly what people do, especially when it comes to online sales. You know, when you're your cover at a thumbnail size is pretty much all people are going to see. So if it doesn't stand out amongst the other books in your genre, then chances are you're not even going to get that first click before they even get a chance to buy your book. So cover is just so important. And you can actually get like really good covers made, especially ebook covers made on on places like Fiverr for 10, 20 bucks. So, I mean, I know I've gotten, uh, I've gotten an ebook, paperback, and even an audiobook, uh, separate covers, and I've gotten them done for like 20 bucks. So, there's no reason why you can't at least get an ebook cover done, get it done for five bucks if that's all you can afford. And then you can, I've got videos where I show you in Canva how to put like a spine on it and how to put a back cover to it. So, if you can get a professional ebook cover done, if you can't afford to get professional paperback, get a professional ebook cover done, and then you can 
transfer that and make it into a paperback. But ideally, you want to get the whole thing. You want to get a professional cover for your ebook, a professional cover for your paperback, and then a different cover for your audiobook if you're going for audiobooks. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's something you can't stress enough. And also, you want to make sure that not only does it stick out in your genre, but that it still fits in your genre, if that makes sense. So, you know, if you're writing, if you're doing a book on, you know, sci-fi or something like that, you want to make sure that, that your cover looks like a sci-fi cover, but that it still sticks out amongst all the other sci-fi covers, if that makes sense. If it doesn't, it, you still should do that. So <laughs> let me know if you have any questions on that one. Um, let's see. Title and subtitle. Now, title and subtitle, this is something that where I am 100% confident that self-publishing is getting it right, where traditionally published books don't. And that is, that's your sales page. You know, some, like traditionally published books will typically just give a little blurb about what their book is about. And, and you want to include that in your description page as much as possible, but... Um, Actually, I just mixed two things. Forget I just said that. So, title and subtitle. Title and subtitle, um, they're traditionally published uh, books typically will have a clean title and a clean subtitle if they even have a subtitle. Self-published books, I've seen a lot where they just cram keywords in here. And I'm not against putting keywords in your subtitle, but it's got to make sense and it's got to flow. And you don't want to just jam pack that subtitle. You know, keep it clean. Keep I keep all my keyword, most of my keywords for the keyword slots inside KDP or whatever platform you're using. Also, if you have Amazon Central, don't forget five additional keyword slots. So yeah, when it comes to subtitle and title, only put keywords in there if it makes sense. Don't just keyword stuff, and absolutely don't keyword stuff your description, which brings me to description, which is what I was talking about before, and kind of mixed them up. I'm telling you, YouTube's got me messed up all over the place today. Anyway, description. Description is where self-publishing has got it right, because they use it as their their sales. They, this is their sales page. And so, you know, yes, you can put a little bit about what your book's about, but this is the last chance you have to get that sale. They've already clicked on your image. They already like your cover. So sell them in your description. And what I mean by sell them is not only to you know, entice them and intrigue them. You know, don't be too salesy, but sell them by making your words stand out, meaning HTML. I did an entire video on how to make your book description pop. I, teach, I show you how to use some HTML change the you know the size of the header make it bold and absolutely without a doubt sell them by using a call to action at the end if they like your cover they've read that far into your description they just need you to tell them what to do scroll up click the buy button so in your description this is where self publishing is actually getting it right as opposed to traditionally published but you want to make sure that if you haven't already Put HTML in there. Don't make it super lengthy because you know, people don't like to scroll. We have such such busy schedules nowadays that, that people don't spend a lot of time doing pretty much anything. And so you want to make that header bold and bigger. You want to put a little bit of a blurb, maybe about your book. More, most importantly, sell them on why they want that book whether it's going to help them, whether it's going to entertain them, what is in it for them, and then put a call to action at the bottom in bold and maybe some underlines, something like that. Let's check the chat real quick, make sure I didn't confuse anybody. Uh, great, great tips. Thank you so much. Out of curiosity, why different covers for audio for audible? That is an, awesome question D and this is something that I've seen a lot of people especially self-published that they make this mistake on their audiobook and that is they try to take the regular cover and they squish it because for for ACX for audible 
you want it to be they want it to be 2400 by 2400 square which most books are going to be in a rectangle and so what they'll do what authors will do sometimes actually a lot of times is they'll just take their already existing audio or uh, ebook cover and they'll squish it and format it so it fits into that area and you don't want that you don't want it to look distorted or anything like that you want it to be made specifically for odd for audiobooks for that 2400 by 2400 now i will say that i've done in canva myself i have taken for my one bad call novel i took the already existing ebook and i didn't distort it at all i just took parts of it and used those and move, kind of moved things around and basically made my own audiobook specific cover so as long as you're doing it specifically for audiobooks then you then you should be fine it's what you don't want to do is you don't want to just use an already existing cover for your ebook and just distort it to fit into the 2400 by 2400 pixel uh, square that ACX and, and audible ask for great question great question okay so now I'm going to move on to the very last topic or the very last tip I have and it is this is the one that I said it works for for novels nonfiction it, it, uh, no content books low content books doesn't matter and this is something that I haven't really heard a lot of people talk about and it's a great way to make your book look so much more professional and that is have a logo made have a logo made for your specific brand or if you're using a pen name like I have I have a couple pen names that I use for my no content books and and low content books but one of them I actually put I had a logo professionally made and when I say professionally made I had it done on on uh, Fiverr I think it cost me like 10 bucks um, I used somebody that I was referred to by another author and that's the thing with with using places like Fiverr and Upwork it, a lot of it ha you want to use people that already have a good track rec record in the industry so because there's so many less so many subpar um, people out there that can just take your money and, and not give you what you're looking for that you want to make sure that you use people that you know give quality work uh, for the, for that amount of money and so I did find somebody and they did a logo for me for one of my no content uh, pen names genres and my sales actually within a month of that um, actually increased quite a bit and I didn't change anything else it's not the it's actually not even the peak season for that particular niche but my sales increased quite a bit. Now, I don't know if it was specifically because of the logo, but it doesn't hurt. I mean, it's it's only gonna make your book look more professional. You know, whether it's, and I'm not saying you have to go out and buy, you know, start a business or, you know, public, you know, creating a publishing name and anything like that. Just a logo that makes your book stand out that much more. And again, just, you know, you just want a small size as far as what you would put on your book I actually put mine on the spine because my book is thicker so I'm able to put something on the spine uh, and I also put it on the last page of the book and if you're doing it for like a nonfiction or fiction basically some kind of written book include it at the bottom of your copyright page so again just a little logo doesn't have to be super complex as long as it makes sense for your particular name your business name whatever you're going for for that particular uh, niche and for that particular pen name as long as it makes sense absolutely get that logo made and uh, and and that's again that will make your book look that much more professional so those were the those were the uh, items I had let me check the chat one more time see if anybody has any questions um, let's see Hey Kevin, glad to see you in the house. Uh, let's see, self-publishing with Dale, 
guilty of noticed a drastic difference in sales for Audible once I made unique covers. Absolutely. Those un unique covers make a huge, huge difference. It just, it, again, makes you look more professional. And, you know, when when people, if people are buying an audiobook, they're they're typically busy people. You know, they don't have they don't have enough time, or they just don't want to physically read a book. And so, if if they have to squint and try to figure out what that image is, they're, they've already moved on. So, like I said, it doesn't cost a lot to get a an audiobook specific cover made, but it makes a huge difference. And trust me, Dale, I'm guilty. I've done that on, on a few of my books as well. Uh, luckily for my children's books, they actually were already, uh, they're eight and a half by eight and a half, so they're already in square form. So that wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, and yes, I'm not going to get into much detail, but yes, you can have a children's book, a children's picture book on audio, and it, you can make it work as long as you, again, think outside the box. Um, if you guys are interested in how I did that, um, how you can you know what kind of ideas you can do to have a children's book a children's picture book in audio form uh, put it in the comments let me know and I can do another video on that it, it actually wasn't complex at all uh, it's just again thinking outside the box and a lot of it depends on what your picture book is about uh, let's see oh, it looks like Kevin is working on shirts today on merch I am so behind on merch. Kevin and I talked about that the other day. Um, that's definitely on my to-do list for this week. They, I just lost a huge uh, portion of my merchandise that's already up there. Right before they made the big announcement that they're going to leave everything up for 365 days, they just took down about 50 of my books. So that's something I definitely have to work on. Uh, let's see. Kelly, thank you. I, I'm glad. I'm glad you like the idea about the logo. Yeah, I've. I'll be honest, and I watch a lot, a lot of different channels. Not not so much anymore, which I did a video about how I basically limit the 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 videos that I watch now and the channels that I watch. But I've not heard anybody mention using a logo. But yeah, I I did it on one of mine. Actually, I've done it on a couple of mine, and it's it's actually made a difference. Uh, let's see. Um, children's audiobook makes sense. I used to listen to records as a kid. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, it depends on what the book is about, you know. But and obviously, you don't want to to spend. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't have a lot of money to spend when it comes to getting narrators and stuff like that. But talk to the narrators. A lot of them will have some really, really great ideas on ways to make your book come to life in audio form. Let's see. Some best tips to prepare for launch for a first nonfiction book. Um you know that's that's a really good question. The, nonfiction and fiction a lot of it's the same when it comes to what you can do to to prepare for the launch. One thing you want to do is as early in the writing process as possible, you want to start engaging your potential reader. Whether that means joining groups on Facebook or whatever that, that pertain to that and becoming a valued a valued commodity to that group. You know, comment, make suggestions, ask questions, that kind of thing to where people get familiar with your name as well as familiar with what you have to say as far as you know that that you are giving good advice since we're talking about nonfiction. Um, so that's the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you you already have people familiar with you and because I mean and, and you can do that whether it's fiction or nonfiction uh, if you already have your book written and you're like ready to launch it there's I mean you can obviously you can run ads to it facebook ads um, amazon ads you can do try you can do ads on bookbub so you know that's you can you can do ads to it 
you want to, again, you want to make a big deal about it. You want to kind of get a buzz around it. So the thing is, is if you're not ready for that, but your book is already up for, for presale and you're already, like you can't stop the launch of it, you can always promote it after it's launched. But um, let's see, some other ways. Anybody have any other ways to to promote or to prepare for a launch? Um, another thing when you're launching a book, you, you wanna get, I call them street people. You wanna get friends, family, people who are interested in helping you out to spread the word. And you know, one thing that a lot of people don't talk about when it comes to promoting books and stuff like that is your local newspaper. Newspapers, there's so much negativity in this world that you'd be surprised. Newspapers are looking for that good, that feel good story. So don't be afraid to reach out to your local newspaper or newspapers and send them a message and say, you know, look, I'm, I live in such and such an area. I've just written a book about X, Y, and Z. And I was wondering if you'd be interested in interviewing me. That's a huge thing that, that I, when I did it, I actually had three out of the four newspapers that I sent messages out, letters out to, um, and three out of the four came back to me and said absolutely they wanted to do it. And the fourth one wasn't really in my area, so I wasn't too concerned with that one. So that's something that a lot of people don't think about anymore, is the newspapers, but absolutely it, people still read the newspaper, and they're always looking for feel-good stories. So that's something that you can reach out to. Also, if you're doing nonfiction, you know, reach out to companies, businesses, depending on what your what your topic is about, um, clubs or anything in your area. Yeah, we we focus so much on online that there's a lot of offline options. So if you're writing a book about softball, you know, that's a big topic for me. But if you're writing a book about softball, you know go to your local, you know, the different tournaments that are going on. And, you know, you can talk to the people that are hosting that and see if you can, you know, sell your book there. If they, if they have a publication, possibly they would, you know, write something about you. You can also set up a blog tour where you find multiple blogs in your niche and reach out to them and see if they're willing to write a little bit about your book and about you in their upcoming blogs. Uh, since you're talking about nonfiction, another thing you can do to get your name out there is to reach out to these same blogs and see if they'd be interested in having you as a guest blogger. By you guest blogging, you're introducing yourself to their market and their market can already see what kind of writing you, you do and what you have to say and be even more likely to Google your name or look you up on Amazon and try to get your book. I hope those helped. Uh, let's see. Um, looks like a lot of talk about merch. Yeah. Um, if you're if you're in merch and you're interested in me doing videos about merch, because I I do more than just um, more than just publishing books. Uh, let me know in, in the comments or in the chat and maybe I'll do some more videos on merch as well. So I know I'm, like I said, I need to start revving up on my merch because fourth quarter is right around the corner and you want to make sure you get at least one sale so you're already in the algorithm before people start really uh, shopping hard and heavy during fourth quarter. If I missed your question, um, Feel free to just drop it again. Someone once told me to take your books to a local craft fair. They said it was a good way to get new readers. Not really a launch, but definitely some. That is a great idea, D. Um, I've actually done that. We Every year we have a craft fair here in my hometown. And I actually get quite, especially if you're doing, um, well, I mean, even if you're doing nonfiction, it, it all depends on what your niche is. I mean, if it's, some something that's not really pertaining to your particular area then then craft fairs may not help you out too much um, it depends on how popular that particular topic is um, in your 
in your area, in your town or state, depending on how far away you're willing to go for your uh, for a craft fair. But that's a great idea. I've done that a couple times, and it's especially for my children's books and my softball books has been really successful. But I mean, children's books, every you know, there's children everywhere, and softball is really big here in the Midwest. So that's why they they work out well for me. Let's see. We had an author here put bookmarks in our supermarket. There you go. Uh, you can do bookmarks. You can do um, you can do business cards. More great ideas. More great ideas. Like it. Let's see. All right. Um, I don't see any more questions. Um, so if I don't have any more questions, what I'm going to say is, um, I, on my next my next live next week next Wednesday, um, I'm going to talk about children's books. I'm going to talk about do they really still sell, and what you can do to better your chances of making your children's books sell. So if you are into children's books, make sure that you want to stick around for that next week. If you're not, then hey, share it. Let people know. Sharing is caring. Uh, if you have any questions, again, put it in the, the chat, in the comments. And let's see. Yeah, bookmarks do well in coffee shops. Thank you so much, Kevin. Um, so until next time, I'm Keith Wheeler. And remember to write right.